New data is in for this upcoming winter storm, plus a second snow signal behind it for next week. This video will provide the newest info on both setups, including who could get the most snowfall ahead. Thank you for joining me in this new update. In my most recent videos, I've been discussing the jet stream and how especially a dip in the jet stream as we go towards the end of our Thanksgiving week and into Thanksgiving weekend could result in a winter storm. That's this dip in the jet stream that's going to come down right out of the west and then eventually into central and eastern zones as we finish Friday, head into Saturday, and then Sunday. What's also catching my eye now is the increasing signal for another stronger piece of jet stream energy to tail that one as we go into the first couple days of December. You can actually see that piece of energy as I pause the graphic around the December 1st time frame in the evening as this new piece of some energy rides up through the larger scale dip in the jet stream or trough in the eastern and central U.S. It could be responsible for bringing another winter storm. With cold air already in place, that storm could be a little further south. And that's why I think it's going to be interesting to talk about that system as it gets closer. We'll overview it in at least some level of detail later in the video. Before we look too far ahead, though, I want to focus back in on that near-term winter storm coming at the end of the Thanksgiving week and into the Thanksgiving weekend. Let's take a look at the latest timeline and expected impacts using this blended guidance. Planning things out first, just as we go through the Turkey Day time frame, I want to stress again, Turkey Day itself is going to be a pretty nice day for any outdoor plans, any travel that you might have going on across the United States, with the exception of the Northwest U.S. and then the Great Lakes vicinity where there will be lake effect snow. Pretty much everywhere else will be dry, even if it is on the colder side in terms of temperatures. As the calendar turns from Turkey Day to Black Friday, that's when impacts will begin to pick up with the inbound winter storm. With moisture still mainly coming in from the Pacific, low pressure will be a little bit starved of moisture as it moves through parts of the Wyoming region as well as into Colorado. Nevertheless, there will be some light to moderate snow at times, especially as you go up in elevation in Idaho and Montana. Friday will also have some snowfall bands as far east as parts of the Dakotas and Nebraska based on this guidance. And so once we get beyond this point when moisture is going to start to flow in from the south into this system as the Gulf gets involved in feeding up some energy around Saturday morning. That means an increased chance for some light to moderate to maybe even briefly heavy rain and storms at times for the southern side of this system. That's going to particularly include parts of southern Kansas, parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. Once you get up to where there will likely be this warm frontal boundary stationed, around that boundary and then to the north that's where there will be a transition through a rain snow or sleet mix and then probably into some heavier snowfall parts of nebraska iowa missouri that's where it looks like there will be some heavier pockets of snow as saturday morning rolls on Beyond the sunrise time frame, snow will continue into some parts of the north central plains, but the heaviest snowfall will likely be shifting over into parts of the Midwest. Iowa, northern Missouri, parts of Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Michigan. That's where it looks like there will be some pretty consistent, moderate to heavy snowfall throughout the day on Saturday with this latest guidance. One other trend I've seen with guidance, in addition to some bigger snowfall rates, that's the colder pocket of air lasting a little bit longer, if not holding on entirely through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, where this precipitation was initially expected to turn over more towards a mix of rain and snow or even just completely rain. You can see that happening even as we go through Sunday in the early morning hours. We've still got snow expected as the main form of precipitation through a good chunk of Illinois, Indiana, and even over into Ohio and eastern Kentucky. There could be a brief turnover to some rain at the very end of this event in some of those zones, but how much could that really affect the snow totals if it only lasts a couple hours? Definitely not as much as if it lasted several hours throughout the event. As we go overnight Saturday night into the early part and mid part of Sunday morning, snow will continue in light to moderate bands over some parts of the Great Lakes in the interior northeast. That is still as initially expected. Back down to the south of there, there will be that transition over to rain and storms. Some of these storms could even produce icy and severe weather and flooding from southern Kentucky and Tennessee, stretching back down to the Gulf Coast. The end of the system will likely really happen late through Sunday into early Monday as we see some lighter showers and storms lingering through parts of the southeast U.S. and then maybe some lighter snowfall moving through the rest of the interior northeast. Just to sum up the latest information I gave overall for this system with that latest overview, here's a look at my winter storm and its snow zones graphic with its adjustments for November 28th through November 30th. Of course, the further south you go, that is where the system will bring rain and storms. From Oklahoma and Texas stretching eastward through parts of the deep south and southeast, any impacts that come, especially through the back half of the weekend, will be in the form of some showers and some rumbles of thunder. Some of those storms could even be on the stronger side. Further north, that's where there is going to be the potential for a mix of rain and snow, although that might not extend as far north as originally expected as we just saw. 
And then, of course, north of the mix line, that's where it will be all snow, especially through parts of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. Speaking of the snow, I do want to talk a little bit more about the winter weather side of this system than I did in the last video. On your screen now is an animation I'm going to start playing out. This is your model blend, taking multiple models and putting them together. And it's forecast for 24-hour increments of snowfall at this point. As of Wednesday evening, this is the 24-hour snowfall expected from Friday, November 28th at 7 p.m. to Saturday, November 29th around 7 p.m., especially coming out of South Dakota and Nebraska. And then look at this over into this quarter of Minnesota, Iowa, and then over into the lower Great Lakes vicinity. That is where a lot of guidance is picking up on a heavier snowfall rate. Of course, some of that heavier snowfall would also start to accumulate further east and a little bit further south as we go through Saturday and Saturday night. Parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan would get in on the action more by that point in time. Look at just how much snow is being anticipated by a blend of guidance. This is like the average of, of a bunch of models for that time frame. It's definitely been an uptrend. The current average projection for snowfall heading out of parts of Iowa, especially around and northeast of Des Moines, through a lot of Wisconsin, including Madison and Milwaukee and Green Bay, heading through northern Illinois in the Chicago region, through the Fort Wayne, Indiana area, and then through a lot of the Gulf of Michigan. That is that pink shade, and that indicates upwards of a foot of snow on the high end, and many spots getting at least 8 to 12 inches. If these zones do indeed get 8 plus or even 12 plus inches of snow, that's definitely going to be nice if you are a snow lover staying home, but if you're trying to travel and get back home in the post-Thanksgiving weekend, whether you're driving or flying, this could definitely be treacherous in impacting those travel plans. One thing I think we'll also have to keep an eye on as we go into the next couple days, that's the totals for parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. I very well think they could go up if we continue to see the model trend, indicating some colder air remaining in place and the event staying as snow longer than rain. It's going to be cold before that winter storm begins, and it will get even colder once you are behind it as we go towards the end of this weekend and into next week over much of the U.S. You can see that just by the time we go from the time frame of Saturday the 29th into Sunday the 30th, especially the north central U.S. is expecting well below average temperatures that will be behind the low pressure system as it surges east with numbers 10 to 15 to even 20 degrees below average. Below average temperatures won't stop there, as I've been mentioning. With the jet stream taking that huge dip, it will be a cold and active pattern. That cold pattern will at least last into the first few days of December. It looks like especially the central corridor of the U.S. will see temperatures 10, 15, 20, even 25 to 30 degrees below average at times. As that colder air continues to push down towards the south and east, that means that systems beyond November 30th could bring snowfall even a bit further south. That's what I want to talk about now, the potential for another winter storm that would start right here, Sunday, back with some of the jet stream energy moving into the west and producing snow in the higher elevations there, and then pivoting east into early next week. I want to do this in a no-hype fashion, but I just want to show you first one of the craziest case scenarios I've seen on the models. This is the early morning run of the GFS from our Wednesday here. It shows low pressure organizing as that next piece of jet stream energy rides on in. It shows that low pressure kind of moving up the coast, and with a setup like this, it shows an all-out snow event in the cold pocket, which would be as far south as Kentucky and Tennessee, stretching through the mid-Atlantic, the southern New England zones, where this could very well turn into a nor'easter. However, this is the most bullish scenario showing up for that next piece of jet stream energy. It really is quite questionable how much moisture could really get pulled up into that, given the amount of cold, dry air that will have already been flowing over a lot of the U.S., Come on, though, that's where the fun with this gets to come in as a weather forecaster. Looking at the European model, another reliable computer model used, you can see its solution for that jet stream energy and the low pressure it would cause. Here we go, Monday night into Tuesday. I'm telling you, this is the exact same system the GFS model was showing. It literally barely shows flurries in the Ohio Valley and then a little bit of rain down here in Alabama and Georgia. Maybe some rain picking up as this thing moves into the mid-Atlantic, and then some flurries on the far northern end of the system. A big discrepancy between those two individual models for right now, but both show a signal, and the signal is the key word here. We already have that in place, and that means something's going to be there as we go into the early part of next week. If we look at the model blend, taking multiple solutions and putting them together, you can see the signal shows up on this guidance as well, and it clearly... The best model consensus comes with a chance for some snowfall rising as any energy moves over towards the northeast U.S. I'd definitely be on the lookout, especially from the Ohio and Tennessee Valley, and then eastward as of now. One thing's for certain with the signal for early next week, though. It's interesting. It's further south than any winter storm we've seen so far this year, and it could make some snow lovers happy. So I think that's a reason to keep an eye on it. 
With that being said, let's jump into the headlines recap as we conclude this video. Of course, there is going to be that Thanksgiving weekend winter storm, but it will likely now get followed by another system early next week. Between Storm 1 and 2, areas from the Plains to the Tennessee Valley and Mid-Atlantic could, keyword could, see some snow. That second storm is the one that's especially up in the air as to where it will possibly snow and how much it could really snow if some flakes do indeed come down. Because of that, you need to be staying tuned for updates, especially if you are interested in that second system. That's all I got for now, though, so make sure that you are hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you don't miss my updates as they come consistently in the future. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Leave any comments and questions you have down below. God bless you. One Nation Web.